Hi guys, well you'll have seen that MSI offset the announcement of one of the latest Intel Z490 boards and today we're going to be checking out that very board. So this here is the MSI Z490 Unify. Now if you're the type of user that really wants to see an end to RGB lighting and ditch it in exchange for a super sleek, refined aesthetic, then this should be right up your street. Unify takes away all of that fluff and is designed for the purest. MSI has performed an overhaul to the power circuitry for this season's Unify by arming it with ISL phase controllers. In short, we get a mirror or a doubling of the phase output for next-gen CPUs, and we're excited to see how this translates in the overclocking arena. The PCI Express configuration is also Gen 4 and ready for those future updates. We also get USB 3.2 Gen 2 x 2 and so by all accounts this is looking like a high performance offering. Now in terms of the pricing for Unify, you're looking at 299 in the US, 294 in the UK and then 599 if you're in Australia. So it kind of steps away from the mid-range into the high end for 10th gen and it's packed with loads of features, all of which we're now gonna explore. Before we get into our review, today's video is brought to you by Corsair and the K95 RGB Platinum XT. This mechanical keyboard is the brand's current flagship and it boasts perky RGB backlighting, a 19 zone light edge across the top of the board, as well as dedicated media keys with volume roller. There are also dedicated macro keys on the left side and this XT has full support for the Elgato Stream Deck. So this is undoubtedly one of Corsair's most feature-rich keyboards to date. For more info on the XT, check out that link in the description. Here is the packaging for Unify. Over on the back we have a picture of the board and the back panel. And I like that they've actually not just bombarded you with marketing jargon. They've got sections here and the components which are relevant to cooling, to gaming and overclocking, they're all listed. Inside the box we have the board itself to begin with. We have a load of documentation, user guide, quick installation guide, a load of labels for your SATA cables there, to register your product promotional thing there. We've got the reward program case badge, so that's M.2 screws there. Driver CD, it's always better to go directly on the website anyway to get the latest, but those are there anyway. And then we have this leaflet promoting the latest products. And likewise, we get a bunch of accessories here. The antenna for the 802.11ax, that goes onto the back panel. Four SATA cables. And then we have a bunch of RGB cables. These are extension cables. One is a Y cable, one is for Corsair, and one is for Rainbow LED. Okay, so here is Unify. I think they pretty much nailed the aesthetics on this board. Don't know what you guys think, but even though it doesn't introduce any vibrant colors, I think it looks so sleek. We get a matte black PCB with black heat sinks and ports. We get no RGB lighting as this is exclusively designed for purists who prefer not to dabble in such features and like to keep it subtle. In terms of the size of Unify, this is an ATX board, so it's gonna fit inside most mid towers. So we'll begin at the CPU socket. We have full support here for Intel's 10th gen Comet Lake CPUs as we're dealing with socket 1200. And so while you can't use 9th gen CPUs here, the mounting coils around the socket for the CPU cooler are the same alignment as 1151. So if you already got a cooler there for 1151, then it will install. Just be sure to check that it is up to the job of providing sufficient cooling by checking with the manufacturer. Now in terms of the power circuit, we have 16 digital power phases by making use of the Intersil Digital PWM. MSI has equipped the board to have 90 amp smart power stages and titanium chokes, which are version three, all of which are gonna handle 10th gen and should allow for excellent overclocks. That VRM configuration is cooled by using twin heatsink design and the copper pipe there runs through both of them. Just behind the rear panel on the board, MSI has also included a small fan to amplify the cooling by lifting off that heat from that huge heatsink. In our web review, we're gonna be checking out to see how effective of this solution is and of course to see how well it overclocks. Up to now on many boards we've seen 8 plus 4 pin for the CPU power however MSI has armed this board with 8 plus 8 however unlike other manufacturers they haven't gone with the solid pins on this board. Now in terms of headers there is one CPU fan header, one header for water pumps and then another six which are for system fans. Now while we don't get integrated lighting on Unify there are some RGB headers. We have a 4 pin RGB, a 3 pin Corsair LED and two 3 pin Rainbow LED headers. 
Over in the memory department, we have dual channel DDR4 support up to 128 gig and up to 4800 megahertz. And in close proximity to the memory, we have EZ Debug LED for quick diagnosis of issues on startup. And on the other side of the 24 pin ATX, we have two USB 3.2 front panel headers, Gen 1 and Gen 2. So you'll be able to get type C on your case. Next is the storage, which includes six SATA 36G ports for any SATA based devices. And then we also have three M.2 slots, and those utilize PCI Express Gen 3X4 for the moment, but are PCI Express 4 ready. And one of those extends to allow 2110 form factor. All of those come with the respective heat sinks to keep the drives cool. And those attached to that heat sink for the Z490 chip. In the bottom corner, we have the LED debug, which throws up codes, helping you determine if there is a fault when you get a problematic boot up. Onboard power and reset buttons are also found on Unify, which are handy if you've got this board on a test bench. And that LED switch right next to the power is there to allow you to disable that LED on that button. In the expansion area, we have three PCI Express 3.0 X16s and two PCI Express 3.0 X1s. And the modes for the X16s are 16, 8 and 4. The top slot is the one that offers the full 16 lanes from the CPU. If you're only going to use a single graphics card, the top one is the best. And if you add in another card, it's going to drop to either 8 or 4. And NVIDIA SLI and AMD Crossfire are both supported. All of those X16s have been given that added protection of the steel reinforcement and enhanced soldering on the backside. Beside the PCI Express, we have the audio solution, which is based around the Realtek ALC1220 codec. MSI has kitted this board out with the usual dose of audio treatment. We get the ESS audio DAC, Chemicon audio caps, dedicated audio amp, separated audio layers, and isolation circuitry. And then finally we turn to the back panel for connectivity which already has that cover pre-attached. And here we get clear CMOS button with the BIOS flash button, two USB 2 ports with a PS2 keyboard and mouse, two USB 3.2 Gen 2, those are in the red, two USB 3.2 Gen 1, those are in the blue, a 2.5 gig Ethernet, a USB 3.2 Gen 2 in the red again, and underneath it a USB 3.2 Gen 2 x 2, that is type C, the 802.11ax antenna connectors, and then finally those audio jacks with the optical out. And that USB 3.2 Gen 2 x 2 will give you double the bandwidth of Gen 2 by delivering up to 20 gigabits. So that's nice inclusion there. Not something we've seen before on boards that we've checked out so far, but it does still baffle me that we're still getting those USB 2 ports. You know, I really wish that brands would replace them with USB 3.2 instead. All right, well, that is the MSI Z490 Unify. Designed specifically for those that want to keep it subtle, the type of user really that prefers not to dabble in that glitzy RGB lighting. And looking at it purely on the aesthetics, it is one of my favorites so far. You know, this is going to go down really well in a sleek system build. But what do you guys think of the lack of RGB on this board? Let me know by casting your vote in the top right corner. Now, this board doesn't shy away from offering a few features which other boards seem to have sidestepped for the moment, and I'm thinking PCI Express 4 support, and more specifically USB 3.2 x 2 which is supplied by using the AS Media 3241 controller. This effectively gives you transfer rates from a Type-C of up to 20 gigabits. Oddly enough, the Mini ITX version of Unify opts for Thunderbolt 3 instead of this 2x2. Two two. So with Unify, we get a load of diagnostic features features. Uh, those types of elements aren't perhaps necessary for all users, but they're handy to have if you like to you know, troubleshoot your board if you get any issues. It's also interesting to see that we've got a rather robust uh, VRM configuration and also the 8 plus 8 pin at the top. In our web review, which will be going up very soon once that CPU embargo lifts, we'll be checking out how well this performs in terms of the overclocking ability very soon. And for all those benchmarks, be sure to check out that link which will be on the screen and in the description very soon. Thanks for checking out today's video, guys. If you would like to support the channel, then please subscribe and like the video. And if you've got any questions, drop them in the comment section below. I'll catch you guys very soon.